in this short tutorial, we're going to talk about hot spots, cold spots, and spatial outliers. Hot spots, cold spots, and spatial outliers are examples of leases, local indicators for spatial autocorrelation, which are different than global metrics. In these local indicators for spatial autocorrelation, each enumeration unit or point in some cases is going to be given a value of a hot spot, cold spot, or neither based on its relationship between its neighbors and the mean. In terms of our definition, a hot spot is going to be a high value surrounded by other high values. A cold spot is going to be a low value surrounded by other low values. Now, there are a lot of rooms for interpretation for what the word high and surrounded by really means. High values are going to be in relation to the mean. Low values will be in relation to the mean. And then we can also define the word surrounded or neighbor a number of different ways, which we'll look at with our tools. In this example we're looking at here, we're looking at Durham Police Department incidents for the year 2022. And you can see that I ran a spatial join here so I could find out the rate of crimes per 100 people for the year 2022. If I right mouse click and open up my attribute table, you can see I calculated these for the rate in 2020, the rate for 2021, and the rate for 2022. You can see that I have my join count here so that I ran a spatial join to join count the number of times each of these points occur within each of these census tracts. These, uh, these tutorials are in support of my geostatistics and crime mapping analysis courses. And so you can see I extracted out exactly 100 census block groups that lie entirely within Durham, uh, Durham city limits. So they're not under the auspices of the police department or other adjoining counties or whatnot here. And so 100 just happens to be the, the number right here. And then also I mapped these using a, uh, I mapped these using my right mouse click, go into symbology, and you can see that I've mapped the rate using the, the natural break, breaks method right here. And so you can see with these maps here, these maps are created using the techniques and nomenclature and divisions that I've declared were that when we run pure geospatial statistics such as hotspots, cold spots, and spatial outliers, there's going to be no room for interpretation with those. The average is going to be the average based on these, where that you can see in my legend right here, I've, I've kind of gone through and defined these. So I can make these quantile or um, um, natural breaks or equal interval or whatever I want to do. First thing we'll look at are the first thing that we'll look at are going to be the hot spots and cold spots. And the other thing that I did do here is that I went and calculated the rate here. And so with the rate, I right mouse clicked. With the calculate field, you can see the calculation that I did. 100 times the join count divided by population. So I did calculate a new rate right here based on the spatial join uh, with the join count as well as the population. So we will be mapping this rate 2022, and we can map these in relation to rate 2021 versus rate 2020 or whatever else we want to do. But you can see I've mapped this crime rate for 2022 uh, based on the, the incidents and whatnot. So over here in my spatial statistics tools, I've got analyzing patterns right here. I've got a couple of global me measures for spatial autocorrelation. Uh, one is the global Moran's eye that we've talked about before in my other classes here. We're going to run two of them right here. One's called cluster and outlier, outlier analysis, which is your Anselin local Moran's eye, which look for spatial outliers, high values surrounded by low values, low values surrounded by high values. Because when we talk about spatial autocorrelation, we assume high values are going to be near other high values, low values are going to be near other low values. We'll talk about what this value of near means. And then we're going to look at hotspot analysis, the Geddes or GI star, uh, which basically runs this calculations and convert these to a z-score and a p-value. Uh, and we'll talk about that a, a little bit as well. You can see some other types of clusters here with multivariate clustering, similarity search, which gets into a little bit of an attribute data analysis and balanced zones. And so there's a lot of neat and evolving tools attached to the clusters. 
So I'm going to map the hotspot analysis right here. So I'm just going to double click on this. And I have a number of different input parameters. And like we've talked about with other tools in our tutorials, the more drop downs we have, the more of a chance we have of kind of messing things up or getting incorrect or misinterpreted results. And so what we'll look at here, our input feature class is going to be the block groups. And what we're going to, our input field is just going to be the rate for 2022 that I've gone through the trouble of creating. My output feature class, I'll just leave this as Durham Block Groups Hotspot 1, which will be saved in my working, uh, working uh, folder and database that we have right here. And then under this drop down right here, this is our con conceptualization of spatial neighborhoods. Right here, it's got fixed distance band. But you can see I've got a number of different neighborhoods. So when I talk about high value surrounded by other high values, what does the word surrounded by mean? Inverse distance means values that are closer to that enumeration unit in, in question is going to have a more of an in factor, more of a weight than ones that are further away. Because remember, this is going to be a Lisa. And at the end of the day, each of these 100 block groups is going to be labeled as a hot spot, cold spot, or neither hot spot nor cold spot. Uh, inverse distance squared, where that values that are closer are going to have much more of an impact than those further away. Fixed distance band, which we'll use here, here uh, K nearest neighbors, contiguity edges. So basically, the only your neighbor is going to be anything that borders you. And then we also include a scenario where it includes corners. So I'm just going to leave it as the fixed distance band right here. And so these are my input parameters. And I'm going to run this. And so we're mapping the rate for 2022. And so you can see what we have right here. We can see what we have right here where that now I have a hot spot of high crime rates right here. And these are hot spots with 99% confidence. And then I've got a cold spot right here with 90% confidence. And all this means is that these are high values surrounded by other high values. Because I can see something up here that's a high value, but it's not surrounded by other high values. Another one over here, it's a high value, but it's not surrounded by other high values. And so if I run my conceptualization of spatial neighborhoods or my neighbors a little bit differently, you're going to see I'm, getting, I'm going to have different hot spots and cold spots. So remember high, high means with respect to the mean, the mean of all 100 of these values. Now, just a quick inspection of my attribute table and the resulting analysis is that you can see my input parameters here. I've got this GI Z score. I've got this and I've got a P value right here. And so and I've got these bins. And so if I were to sort these P values from ascending to descending, you can see I've got these P values, these low P values are going to be assigned values of three. And so these threes are going to align with my hot spots. And then I get down to some of these negatives right here. Negative one, negative two, negative three. You can see these negative one, negative two, negative threes right here. These are going to be assigned with my cold spots. And so anything with these bins refers to the, the uh, corresponding or respective colors up on this map right here. And so you can see that there's 99, 95, 90, 90, 95, 99% significance. So as you can imagine, we're working with these tolerances or significance, significances, there's not gonna be that many that are in a hot spot or a cold spot. Most of these are gonna kind of be in this region between they're not significant whatsoever. A couple things off the top of my head. When you have very few hot spots and cold spots, that that's articulates more of a checkerboard pattern where we don't have high values surrounded by other high values. And so the actual number of hot spots and cold spots can lead into some spatial autocorrelation, like some of those descriptive metrics that we talked about to describe the entire data set. And so this is a great example of our hot spots and cold spots, because like I said before, at the end of the day, this map right here of the rate for 2022 was created by me. Okay, I created these colors. And so I could change these divisions a little bit and 
but these underlying patterns are still going to be the same no matter how this map is colored in. So these are for hot spots and cold spots. Another thing that I like to look at that I've looked at a little bit more recently is cluster and outlier analysis. And so it'll kind of trend, it'll also kind of tease out some of the trends that we've just looked at, as well as outliers, which are high values surrounded by low values or low values surrounded by other high values. And so this is the Ansel and Local Moran's eye uh, cluster and outlier analysis. We're going to run the same exact thing here where we look at the block groups. And our input field is going to be the rate 2022. Like I've said before, we can change our conceptualization of our spatial relationships to inverse distance. But since we ran the hot spots and cold spots using the um, uh, using the fixed distance band, I'll once again just run it for fixed distance band right here. But I think my input was inverse distance versus fixed distance band. So I'll run it for fixed distance band. And then I'm going to run it. And we'll see what this brings us. Well, so what we're looking at right here is I can see some high, high clusters, high values surrounded by other high values right here in pink are low values in the same general location that we had for our hot spots. But I see a couple of low, high clusters right here. So these are low values surrounded by other high values. And if I were just uncheck these right here, so you can see these low values surrounded by other high values right here, meaning these should be a little bit lower or higher based on the values. Because remember, we colored these in right here. So this one right here, and I'll focus explicitly on this one right here, is that this is a low value surrounded by other high values. However, we define the word high, and we use fixed distance band right here. So in theory, this should also be red. This should be a hot spot. So this is inordinate, inordinately low compared to the values around it, while these right here are also inordinately low compared to the values around it. And so we have these spatial outliers right here. If I wanted to run a different type of conceptualization of neighborhood, then let me just run the inverse distance just for the heck of it. I'll call it three right here, give it a name, new name to this feature class right here. And so I'm gonna run the same exact calculation using the different, uh, different application of neighborhood, and you're gonna see the differences that I get right here. So I'll check this here. So I get the same general values right here, you see, but I, I do have a new low, low cluster as well as a new high low cluster. So you can see, even though I'm running the same exact algorithm, you know, Ansel and Local Moran's eye to tease out some of these sp spatial outliers and also elucidate the high, high and low, low that we did with the uh, Geddes Ord, you can see it changed slightly. You can see we have slightly different, we have slightly uh, different low highs and low lows based on this. So in summary, what we looked at today and in this tutorial was the conversion of data like this here to the mapping of hot spots and cold spots that have statistical significances, whether it's hot spots and cold spots. And these are really powerful maps that are easy to understand by everyone. Or we can look at some of these spatial outliers, which kind of give off uh, give off where spatial, uh, spatial autocorrelation is kind of being bucked a little bit, um, especially with the low highs and the high lows. And so these are really powerful tools that will be understood by everyone when we can look at these, some of these leases, these local indicators for spatial autocorrelation.